Coach Munkin, that is good as anyone in the country. That's what Eric Zire had to say uh, to Buck Blue on a podcast. Let me read the full quote here, Matt. I think we've got a play caller in co- co- Coach Munkin that is as good as anyone in the country. Uh, I think we've got a skill set from a talent perspective that's as good as anybody in the country. That's Eric Zire getting getting about as far away from Eric, Larry Munson as possible um, in his his assessment of the Georgia offense. Matt, what do you what do you make of that? Is is I mean, well, I think Eric, I think Eric Zire would love to play under Todd Munkin. That's, I, I think he's yeah, <laughs> that would be his ideal dream. But I thought Todd Munkin did an excellent job last year. And even in times where it didn't look all that great on offense, especially in the passing game, if you go back and watch, there are guys running wide open all across the field. Uh, So the plays were there to be made. And especially down the field, there were guys running wide open, especially late in the Florida game that just, they didn't make it. The the players didn't make it. But I I can only imagine what Todd Munkin was doing up there in the headset, knowing a lot of these plays should have worked that didn't. But he is a proven play caller. I mean, he put up tons of points at Oklahoma state. The guy's been doing this forever. There's a reason Kirby smart hired him. And I think the offense is only going to get better and better second year in the system. Second year with JT Daniels. Now, is he as good as Lane Kiffin or Ryan day, Lincoln Riley, some of these other great outstanding play callers in the country? I don't know, but it works. And we saw it last year. His philosophy works. He loves to air the ball out and, you know, Brock Vandergriff told me multiple times he can't wait to get in there and learn under uh, Coach Monken. Gellner Stocks has told me the same thing. They're excited to get in there under his system and let it rip down the field. So Todd is telling these young quarterbacks, hey, I'm going to let you throw the ball all around all you want, and we're going to provide you with weapons not only at running back, but at wide receiver and tight end, too. So Eric was right. The talent is absolutely there. I think the philosophy uh, is there, and I think the offense should help Georgia to be able to be one of those teams that can score 40 points a game and outscore their opponent when they need to. I was, that's The last part is the most important part, when they need to. I don't know how many words that is, four, three. I mean, you know, those three words matter a lot, when they need to, because, excuse me, four words. Uh, we've just... I mean, all you have to do is listen to what Nick Nick Saban had to say. I think I don't know if it was earlier this year or late last year or whenever. He was talking about sort of the, he didn't put it this way, but the death death of defense. He he said that Alabama had allowed something like 19 points a game on uh, defense in 2020, and they won the national championship. He didn't even think they he he didn't call that good. Um, but in the new world of college football, you you man, you got to score. I mean, this has become closer and closer to the old Southwest Conference where you're just throwing the ball all over the field. And you're, de- you, I mean, like Oklahoma, and I assume Texas will be in the same category, but Oklahoma is going to need to improve its defense to win the national championship. Georgia's got to improve its offense, Matt. And that's that's what Todd Munkin was, was sent to Georgia to do. And, I know it's popular for whatever reason to run Stetson Bennett down, and that's that's fine. I mean, whatever. But there were times when they really scored a lot of points when Stetson was the quarterback. You go back and you look at the the half of the Arkansas game when he actually played. They they were pretty productive on offense, generally speaking. There, the amount of uh, production, the efficiency against Auburn, the Tennessee game. Now after that, everything slowed down. But during though that time. And particularly, you could see it in Jacksonville, particularly, I guess you could say, the guys were wide open. And it was obvious that there wasn't anything that the Florida defense was doing to stop Georgia. Georgia's quarterbacks were not ready to play effectively that day as soon as Stetson Bennett got hurt. And Dwan Mathis was just lost. But the, the play calls were there, period. I think, I think Kirby finally came around to, okay, now we do have to outscore everyone. Um, as, think, as important as controlling the line of scrimmage is and running the football, there's a reason they went hard after Jermaine Burton to flip him. There's a reason they went down and got Arian Smith. You have to score a lot, and you have to score in a hurry at times. I mean, you want to be able to put up points immediately. If you give up a touchdown, you got to get it back pretty quick. And in today's era of college football, you're seeing if the offensive line holds up, the quarterback has multiple guys down the field he's able to throw to. It's not just crossing routes here and there. I mean, there's they're pushing the ball down the field, 
And a lot of that has to do with uh, the receivers. Alabama had multiple receivers who could beat and get behind a defense. And Georgia is bringing in that type of talent. And they have the offensive scheme uh, that allows them to do that, I think, too. So not only do you have to score 40-plus a game, I guess, now to win a national championship, but you have to be able to score in a hurry when you need to. If you're down by two scores and you know, you're know you in the second half, you have to be able to score pretty quick. And that includes, you know, involves getting guys open down the field and hitting them. Well, I, I do want to – I don't often come to Kirby Smart's defense because he can do that himself. He does not need me to do it. And I don't maybe articulate it as well as, as he would think he does. But I do think that he has been trying to get to this for some time, actually. Um, it's just that Justin Fields left. Uh, you know, they, they had uh, George Pickens. Now, this is his third. This will be his third year in the program. Um, same thing with Blaylock. I mean, these are exceptional receivers. And in order to get those guys, you have to have recruited them. So more, about four years ago, which is somewhere in the 17 season, they knew they had to change. And, and, and p- part of the time in 16, they were trying to outscore people. Think back to that Missouri game and the, how they had to f- try to fling it up and down the field. Um, it just the, – the, the issue at quarterback is everyone watching – excuse me, the issue at Georgia is everyone who's watching this has been the quarterbacks. And, you know, Jake Fromm was just not a point scorer. He was a, uh, a manager of, of, of the offense. He was good at that at times. And when you had Nick Chubb and Sony and, you know, DeAndre and Elijah – uh, and some combination of those people, that really worked because, you know, Jake Fromm was a good trigger man. But at the end of the day, you got to score more. And now, if you listen to Eric Zier, who who does know something about football, right, um, at least a minimum, uh, yeah. when Eric is saying this, he's just pointing out the opportunity that Georgia's got, which is that you have – I mean, do you think J- Jermaine Burton's a special player? Yeah, I do. I do. I don't know if Georgia's offense would have been if they could p- play like that under Jim Chaney. He doesn't, you know. I don't know if they're scoring forty points a game and, and and scoring being as explosive as they could be under Todd Munkin in his second year. So I do think, I think that's important. like I got to go get a guy who can throw it around a little more and score quicker. Well, let me just say this too: if you go back and study. Um, whether it was Mike Bobo or now with Todd Munkin, you look at Todd Munkin's second, third year at offenses, they really score a lot of points. I mean, whether it was at Oklahoma State or at Southern Miss, you're starting to talk about getting closer and closer to scoring 50 points a game. If this team averages 50 points a game, I'm not sure they lose a game. Yeah. I mean, but do you think – I mean, let's just say they average 47 points a game. Like, that's what Clemson and Alabama have been putting up. Do you see them losing? I, I don't, actually. I don't because this defense is yeah. as good as anybody in the country. Who has a yeah. better defense than Georgia? It's easy to look at Alabama, but I, I can't name a few of their starters right now. I, um, but mainly because they just rotate. Five stars come in, five stars come out, and they just rebuild. So I don't know how good they're going to be. I don't think they have the returning defenders that Georgia does. Right. They might be better in the secondary, but I don't think Alabama or anyone's front seven is as good as Georgia's. Yeah. Clemson's is really good. I don't think it's better than Georgia's. I don't think it's better than Georgia's, and I'm not going to go off on a tangent talking about their spring game, but I will say I was – I didn't really know what to make of it. I know they got guys out. Um, I don't know, Matt. Did you see it at all? I saw some of it. Uh, there's a lot going on at do, the Do you the know why I'm not trip, saying but... things? Yeah, it didn't look very smooth no. or, or natural. No. Um and no. it, it wasn't clean. And It's a spring game. So then I go yeah. like, ah, it's a spring game. You know, yeah. what's the big deal? Dow didn't seem like he was concerned with yeah. anything. But yeah. I thought Georgia had a pretty lousy spring game heading into 20, the, the 2017 season. But the fundamentals um, of that season changed yeah. um, in game one. And, I, I, you know, and the fundamentals of Clemson's season could change in game one. But they still have very explosive receivers – and that's what Georgia, you know, that's what Eric's talking about. Is the explosion is there, and you have a trigger man and JT, who is eager to throw the football in a way that Jake Fromm, I don't think, really was ever. I mean, Jake Fromm wasn't scoring like this; it just wasn't. Right. 
And the thing is, JT can get better. I mean, he underthrew yeah. a lot of those deep balls, and uh, it, it's hard to overthrow a guy like Arian Smith and Jermaine Burton, especially when they get a free release and they're not jammed up the line of scrimmage and they can just go. They're going to get down the field in a hurry. So I, I don't know if that had to do with his shoulder or whatever was going on. And he did connect on some deep balls, especially in the Mississippi State game. Yes. Uh, I think – It'll probably be a little more consistent. A, a lot of that state year. game was coverage. Yeah. I mean, it just dictated, yep. hey, you know, we're zero coverage. I mean, if your guy beats our guy, and that's yeah. that's too easy, though, man. Like, yeah. you can't do well, that. Well, they, they said, you're not running the ball. Well, they us. certainly, yeah. you didn't. You are not running the ball. You're going to, I mean, this new JT Daniels kid is going to have to throw all over us if you want to win, and that's what happened. Yeah. Well, you, you, you try to make people hit backhands, man. Sometimes they've really got a good backhand. That's, that's the problem with that. But, Eric Zier really thinks that Georgia is in a good position on offense. What do you think? Tell us down below. Uh, when you're not commenting below, we'll see you over on the website, dogpost.com.